Welcome to Unlived Lives, a weekly YouTube series and podcast exploring interesting questions, personal stories and revealing thoughts. For this special Season 1 Highlights episode, I've put together some of the most profound, amusing and heartfelt thoughts that my guests shared during their interview. In Season 1, I invited people from throughout my life to consider interesting questions inspired by the School of Life's 100 Questions Conversation Toolkit, covering areas of self-knowledge, personality and emotions, work and money, life and death. Before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel or podcast for a new episode every Wednesday. And leave a comment down below the video or in a podcast review with an interesting question you would like me to ask my guests in season two. But I find myself very interested in in what people could be doing. What in a, in a world where everyone was being, was entirely wrapped up and engaged and, and content and driven in the work that they do, in, in, in a world where everyone was doing that, what state would we be in, you know? And, and that sort of vision of, for lack of a better word, utopia, um, where where everybody is doing doing that and and maximizing for maximizing their ability and their output for the for the good of all and the good of the world and community. That's sort of the end game for for this idea, I th- I, I think, and so and so exploring that in this podcast is really what I'd like to do. Um, to find people brave enough to to explore those ideas in themselves and explore why they are where they are and had there been a couple of different decisions at key points where they could be and what they could be doing to output um, perhaps a greater amount Uh, and it's and I think it's important to state that outputting a, a, a greater amount or in a certain field or whatever, it doesn't need to be uh, extraordinary. Um, but certainly I have a tendency to daydream and always have and do dwell on, oh, if only I'd done that course at uni or that degree or I hadn't moved away to that con- to Scotland when I was um, 18 to that uni and done that, then perhaps I would have made it in some other way or I'm not I don't know maybe life will start when this happens with meditation and mindfulness I think I'm starting to realize more than ever that life is right now and that you shouldn't start stop wait you should stop waiting for it to start because you're living in the moment and you'll not appreciate it stop living in the past living in the future so much so and living in a moment can, can also just extend the pleasure of those moments. You know, it's interesting. I have in performance sometimes done something, I thought, God, that was really good, and then very quickly screwed up the next bit. Yes. So you, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. Um, but you, if you can find a balance of not, not think about how the world's looking at you, because that often is a part of the, God, that went well. But just thought, okay, it's just another piece of the the, re, a re, the reiterated foundation of why it's going to work in the next minute. Mm. Each minute that works means the next minute will work, um, really. But also because, I mean, performing is a physical pleasure. It's not all retrospective. But enjoy it, but don't think about the fact you've just enjoyed it. Mm. You know, just because you, when something really works in a, when you're singing or playing, but I'm not a professional player of anything, but when I'm singing, you know, when it really works, I think, you, you, I, I don't think, I just feel it's worked. And that just comes for, well, we just carry on doing that then. Mm. <laughs> just, you know, don't mess around with it, just carry on. Mm. Don't, don't tweak it, just carry on doing it. One of the things, my philosophy is, even when I was working with the sewage, cleaning the mess up, no, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but um, it was my job, and it was my job to do it to the best ability. And when I walked away from a job, when I got to the job, you could have sewage running down the street. 
And when I left the job, all that would be all cleared up. And that made me feel good to walk away and look behind me before I jumped in the van to go away and say, yep, yeah, I've done a good job there. Mm. And I feel as if that's made me a good person because other people would, wouldn't or couldn't do it. Mm. You know, So that's made me a good person, I think. Isn't one. Isn't one. There isn't a philosophy. There's terrible ups and downs of uh, uh, arrogant confidence and total despair and sort of dull, lukewarm in betweenies. Oh, I'm good enough. You know, it's like all the arts have that. I don't care if it's an actor, a composer, a painter, or a, a writer. I, it it has to be. Open. All the art forms are open to total highs and and delirious, uh, arrogant confidence and utter despair. It can come within one hour. I'm not a big group person, and that's taken me a long time to discover. And me and Sue have talked about this. And I think there are people who are very good mm. in groups, but I tend to get I tend to get overwhelmed. I think, by them. And also, I can only seem to spend a certain amount of time with them. And again, it's something I've only realised in later life and accepted myself, mm. that if I see a whole load of people, it's lovely to see them, you know, and I have a really good time, and then I've had enough. Mm. Not that I'm being rude and I'm going to walk off, and I wouldn't, but I remember going, uh, some friends all got together a few years ago, and it was great, really had a good time, and then we all stayed over in this cottage, And then the next day they wanted me to go off and do something else. Mm. You know, they were all going off. I can't remember to see someone else. Yeah. And I, I thought, no, I just want to go home. Mm. I just want to go. I've, I've actually reached my limit, limit now. Mm. That's it. I'm over. My brain's overwhelmed. I can't have any more bonhomie. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to go. Uh, and I did. And some of them were a bit, oh, you're sort of going. Well, yeah, I've got to get back and so on. Yeah. Um, so, and I think it's ac accepting that to mm. some extent. There is danger, no doubt. No. Yes, I've fallen and broken bones and things, and I used to have the whole summer of falling off of boats at one time. Um, but no, we survive those things. You know, those sort of little crises that we have. You know, unless you get killed, then you don't care after that. Um, but you know, <laughs> you know, there's, there's, you know, life's full of little crises. You know, we, you know, I don't think you can sort of live life without them. But if you can learn from them and go over them um, and, 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 and at times laugh at them, then, not, then it's okay. To be genuine, I've always, you know, I don't say strive, strive sounds like it's a battle and I'm always thinking, oh, shall I be an arsehole or shall I fake stuff? You have to wear the mask which gives you certain different attributes It makes you feel more powerful necessarily or changes you a little bit, but at your core, you've got to, you know, as a very dear friend of mine once said, if you've got, if you try and be yourself, because you can't be anybody else very convincingly. You know, I could try and be the, um, kind of the super confident, you know, la -di da video director who's, um, But it's not who I am. It's just, I'm just some bloke that happens to do stuff which people seem to like. And that's the best, that's all I can achieve. And then if that all goes crumbling down, you've still got yourself at the end of it. The thing is, I feel like I'm tenacious. And I feel like I'm rubbish at taking no for an answer. Mm. And I think whatever they say, you build me a 20 foot wall and I'll make you a 20 foot ladder feel like I will always find my way around it. Mm. That struggle that I had with piano, playing the piano, my piano teacher was great. She always used to say, you can't have your cake and eat it. Being that you can't be a jazz pianist without learning scales, arpeggios, harmony, how it all fits together and how you work this machine of a piano. And, <clears throat> and my question, my retort, wasn't a retort, but my further question was just to say, why not? I want it. Mm. want to have my cake and eat it. And that, again, that attitude, which is always saying, I'm not going to buy your, I'm not going to buy your negativity. You leave it on the table. I'm not, you can put it there, but I, it, it doesn't resonate with me. There's no, just, it's, I'm boring to me. I mean, why would I put that in my pocket? Mm. And, 
yeah, I think I've always had that attitude that says, I'm going to, if you, maybe all you're telling me is that you can't do that. That doesn't mean I can't do it. Mm. I'm going to, I reckon I can find, I can build a bigger ladder than this. Uh, And just like, say, to use Desert Island as a sort of instance, like that, um, sitting, listening to and watching, uh, 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 you know, a video like this, I think it does provoke people to ask that question of themselves mm. and to, and also obviously to learn from another person's experience. Um, and I think the, the stories that you've told so far, each one of them has, you know, you learn something from them. Uh, yeah. and you, you, you've been able to draw out a sort of a structure or a theme or an element which has been representing um, uh, an insight that that person has had into life. And those insights are really quite important mm. for them and also for the for the observer to think, yeah, actually that Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. I like that point. Contentness is basically what I'd really like in my life, to be happy really as well with what I have, what I've got to what I've got and what I've what I've achieved. To look back and just be content with what I did is probably the ultimate goal, really. Mm. Rather than be like it's not like I want a house here doing this with this much land or something. I don't care about those type type of things. Just to be happy and look back and realise that you know you had a good life and good people in it. Um, I think I made myself a promise that I would never create the white picket fence ideal version of mm. life for myself first, and and then for everybody else around me. And it's almost like I didn't make the choice. It it some there was I still to this day cannot understand what changed but there was just this it literally felt like a thunderbolt I could feel just suddenly this drop this bank and I just thought no I'm not doing this anymore mm. this has to change and that was scary but the fear of the fear was greater than the fear itself it's always that way you look back and hopefully well, i look back and i i'm so proud that i've got i've got such lovely children they are really lovely people and um and i feel really proud about that and also by the time you're middle aged the children are older so you you're more or less outside looking in a bit more you actually get a chance to step back and have a look and see how things are going and how things have gone and what you can change. I think my personal philosophy is you were, you were going to get to a point whether you have 60% negative and 40% positive or 50-50 or 70-30, you're always going to get to that point. It's just which way which we can kind of decide on and, and amend and that's that's what the journey is kind of figuring out which way you're going to go. That concludes the Unlived Live Season 1 highlights. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel or podcast for a new episode every Wednesday. And don't forget to leave a comment below the video or in your podcast review with a thought on what you found interesting or share an interesting question you would like me to ask my guests to explore in Season 2. I'll see you then.